And now for question number four from the P1 June 2019 International A-Level Excel paper. Um, here we have a question on integration and we've got to integrate this expression with respect to x. Now when you have an expression like this, in order for you to integrate it, you need to prepare it for integration. And in order to prepare it for integration, what you need to do is you need to separate out the terms into separate terms and have the x terms written in the numerator in index form, not in third form. So that's how you prepare such a um, expression to be integrated. So let's just start off by separating the terms into two separate terms. So the integral of, I'm going to write this as 4x squared over 2 times root x. Now root x is the same as x to the power of half. So 4x squared over 2, 2x two to the power of half plus, and you've got 1 over 2 times x to the power of half. Now all of this has to be integrated with respect to x. Okay, so that's why I'm putting these brackets here now. Over here you just have one term, now you've got separate terms. You should put these brackets to show that all of this inside this bracket is going to be integrated with respect to x, both of these terms. Now, we still haven't quite simplified it. We have to get it ready for integration. Uh, well, 4 divided by 2 is 2. Okay, and x to the power of a half, so x squared divided by x to the power of a half, you have to subtract the powers x squared divided by x to the power of half, you subtract the powers. Okay, so this is like <clears throat> x to the power of 4 over 2 minus 1 over 2, which is x to the power of 3 over 2. So this is 2x to the power of 3 over 2. Remember, we still haven't integrated it. We're just preparing it for integration. Okay, plus, now, for this one, you've got to be really careful. A lot of people make the mistake of saying, ah, this is going to be 2x to the power of minus a half, and they'll write something like this. But this is wrong, okay? Because the 2, the power of a half doesn't reply, doesn't apply to the 2 here, it's only to the x. So what you have to do here is you have to write this as the 1 over 2 stays as it is, and you've got x to the power of negative a half. It's only the, the x that you can say moves up when you do this, okay? So, this is not the same as 2x to the power of minus a half, it's a half x to the power of minus a half. Okay, so now we are ready to integrate um, this. So once you start integrating, you don't write the integral sign anymore. And remember, once you've integrated it, and it's one of these type of integrals without any numbers, there, definite integral, you have to write plus c at the end, so don't forget that's one mark. So the first thing you do is add all the power. So that's 2. Oops, it's starting to lag one second. That's 2x to the power of, now 3 over 2 plus 1 is 3 over 2 plus 2 over 2, which is 5 over 2. So you add 1 to the power, and then you divide by the new power. So I'll just write it like this. Okay, plus, and you've got a half times, and you've got x. Now you add 1 to the power, so it gives you a half, divided by the new power, which is a half, and your plus c. Don't forget the plus c. Very important. Okay, so we, we now have to continue. This is a 5 here. Let's make it clear. Make that a bit clearer. There we have a 5. Okay. Now, we have to simplify that, of course. Now, when you're dividing a, um, something by a fraction, it's like you're multiplying by its reciprocal. So this is actually like 2 fifths times 2 x to the power of 5 over 2 and plus and this is like a half times now this is like um, you know the reciprocal of half is 2 so it's like a half times 2 x to the power of a half and you've got your plus c these twos cancel out that gives you 4 fifths 4 over 5 x to the power of 5 over 2 plus x to the power of a half and plus c and there we have our answer for this question okay don't forget the plus c okay that's called the constant of um, integration all right and that constant is there to represent something that could have been in the original expression before you differentiated it when you differentiate a constant it becomes zero so if you were going backwards there could have been a constant here 
which became zero um, when it was integrated. So that, that represents that constant. Okay, so there we have it, question number four completed.